Falcons, one and three, take on the Texans, two and two. This game, uh, the Texans are a five-point home favorite. It's a 49-point over under. The game looks a little brighter than the one we just talked about. You got Matt Ryan v. Deshaun Watson. In the home games for Deshaun Watson this year, he has zero passing touchdowns total. But Atlanta has allowed a top uh, three top ten quarterback performances in a row. It has not been pretty for Atlanta this year. And they are down Keanu Neal, their superstar safety. When, yeah, and, this is and, bad. Uh, the, what's wild about defenses is you have situations like this where you lose just one key piece and then the house of cards crumbles. And uh, this is your your buy low window on DeAndre Hopkins is about to slam shut. This is it's the trifecta, right? We had Mike Evans a few weeks ago. Then you went, it was Devontae Adams. Now it's going to be DeAndre Hopkins. This is the get right game. All the stars are aligned. So if you're trying to buy him, you better do it now. I tried to I tried to buy him. Tried to give some Tyreek Hill and you know as uh, Oh, you got rejected, huh? Of course. Of course you did. Yes, it's called sample size. We have sample size on these players. They're really really good. So four weeks is not a career to find. DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, love them. This is a get-right game for me. I would be taking the Texans and the points. No almost upset. I think Houston gets right in this one, sends Falcons to a dangerous one and four haze, and that's not good for players like Devonta Freeman. Right. Not good for Calvin Ridley. We've seen this team basically make the decision that we're going to be giving Mohamed Sanu more targets, snaps than fantasy owners want. And Austin Hooper has been piled on in terms of targets. That leaves very little for Calvin Ridley. I'm not excited about Calvin Ridley. I don't think he's a bounce back candidate this year. Mohamed Sanu averaging six plus targets a game. Austin Hooper leading all tight ends and routes run. Like, can, do we are we to the point where we really should be giving Mo Sanu the wide receiver three type of love? We I mean Week one, five for 57. Week two was an absolute turd, but then six for 75, nine for 91. Like, that's three the, of four weeks over 50 yards. They Look, if, you look, five at, plus receptions. if you look at Calvin Ridley and Muhammad Sanu, they've basically just taken turns being the guy. Week one and week two, it was Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley was the wide receiver 25 and the wide receiver 8, while Muhammad Sanu was 52 and 78. And then the last two weeks, it just flipped. You know, where Calvin Ridley's 109 and 60 and Muhammad Sanu's 36 and 14. Calvin Ridley's the more talented player. Calvin Ridley's the more invested in player. I, did, I think Calvin Ridley he's is going explosive. to bounce back and he's going to have a good rest of season. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I think you can trust him. I think I'd, I'd rather go out and play uh, some players that are in a better situation where I just don't know if I trust what this office is doing week to week. Even Julio Jones had a rough week last week, so um, maybe we'll end up with some Calvin Ridley related uh, yeah, I think rest of season to. bets. Not that I would bet on Mohamed Sanu. I'm not crowning Mohamed Sanu. I've seen enough of him over the course of multiple years. We've had that conversation 13 times. Mohamed Sanu will run off two games in a row, and everyone's like, oh, is it time for Mohamed Sanu? Fair. Well, who it is time for right now is Austin Hooper. It is, yeah. Tied in two on the season. He's a must start. Kenny Stills, unlikely to play. Austin Hooper's the tight end, too? That is correct. What? All right. I am vetting yeah, and confirming. I'm calling that impossible. No, it is. Look. What? Week I one, think the word you're looking for in, is factual, Mike. Uh, week one, he was the tight end six, then the tight end 15. The last two weeks, he was the tight end two and the tight end one. Yes. I refuse to believe. Austin Hooper showed the signs last year taking a step up this year. At the end of the day, with this offensive line, Matt Ryan is not finding Calvin Ridley deep down the field. He's finding Austin Hooper in the shallows. All right. I refuse to believe. We'll talk about Will Fuller later. <laughs> At the running back position, I don't want to leave without talking about the incredible Carlos Hyde. Uh, you can't start him, can you? I certainly don't want to start him. And you that's what's important. Can you? He's yes. Talk he, about scary start. Yeah, that the, he would qualify. I mean, look, he's at home in a matchup favored to win. He's had a couple of big weeks. But, you know, that week two where he got 20 rushing carries, that appears to be the outlier. Yeah. 10, does. 10, 12 in his other three games. 
I'm staying clear of Carlos Hyde. In case you're curious, Duke Johnson's snap count is up to 65% last week. He's also at 6.3, a carry on the year, which is what he does. I think the trend is going to be towards Duke Johnson because Carlos Hyde, we've seen this. It could be. Like Carlos Hyde, is, when he comes into a team situation, he just must be an incredibly charming person because he shows up and there's always better guys behind him. But somehow he gets to be the guy. He brings the Starbucks. Yeah. Day one, shows up with it. He's got the donuts. He's yeah. like, hey, what's up, everybody? Give him the oh, back this, massage. This Carlos Hyde is a fine, upstanding man. What up, coach? <laughs> yeah. How you feeling today, man? Unfortunately, you the, give me those carries, coach? It takes about three weeks to figure out what yeah. the truth is, whether it's in Jacksonville, whether it's in Cleveland. Cleveland? So that's what I mean. It's, it's very strange. Yeah, don't right. trust Carlos Hyde. Get Zooks! You made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. If you want to see more, click that subscribe button.